Here are some hard truths on bullying and addiction. You see a lot of sites and channels today on bullying, and sometimes you see a lot of other YouTubers weighing in on the subject of bullying. Well, I want to talk about bullying and addiction, not because they're buzzwords, but because they are actually solved or helped when you can identify them together and ac accept that a lot of the truths about them go hand in hand. With all this emphasis on bullying, you have a lot of people trying to stand up for the bullying victims today. And it's become a thing. I've seen a lot of channels cover it. And they say, you need to be strong. You need to stand up for somebody. You need to do all of this stuff to stop the bully. And the schools now, they're going crazy with zero tolerance policies, which are completely ineffective. They're ineffective from the word go. And basically they say, we're trying to make it wrong to bully someone. But the sad thing is, that doesn't work. And it doesn't work because bullies, it, bullies are created by a difference between strength and weakness. Now, a bully's not really strong, but a bully has some strength. When you see someone who is a victim of bullying, they are weak. And it, it's that vacuum of power that is trying to be filled. So in the case of a school kid... You have a, a mean bully kid who's picking on another kid. And it's the fact that the, the, the one kid is weak and unsure of himself and the other kid is very sure of himself. It's that vacuum that people try to, to uh, complete. They try to fill in. Because what have we learned? Nature abhors a vacuum. It always has and it always will. That, by the way, is one of the reasons that life can no longer spontaneously generate whereas it once could. Because the conditions of Earth now do not permit and cannot permit life from spontaneously generating or evolving. All the major organisms are competing for the, with the organisms that are already in existence. So the conditions of primordial Earth were such that the first early cells of life that developed life, that atmosphere is no longer here. It's no longer possible. But now that life has already begun, it's become a power struggle. That's always the way it is, and it's the same thing with addiction. Addiction is its own bully. It's its own bully, and here are some truths about bullies and addiction that are, that are always created. Number one, they will not stop until stopped. It is a horrible idea to think that bullying will go away on its own, or that your addiction will go away on its own. It doesn't work that way, because your brain, whether it's your brain or an individual being bullied, it's that weakness versus the strength the strength of sugar, the strength of uh, your mind's lightening up and craving sugar, or a child's weakness in school, or anyone's weakness. It really doesn't have to be just children in school. Anyone can be a victim of bullying. The problem is the strength differential. So, number one, it will not be stopped on its own. Number two, the bully may not be smart, but they aren't stupid either, and you cannot dodge them. So bullying cannot be dodged. Just as it can't be stopped, number two, it cannot be dodged. If you go back a couple few years and you, you run into the controversy of Bloomberg, uh, mayor of New York, trying to make sodas more expensive and make you not have as big a cups, so you have to come back and get more little cups. Well, Bloomberg was a complete embarrassment because that's one of the stupidest things that you could ever do. You can't, you can't sidestep addiction that way. You cannot dodge addiction. You cannot say, I'm going to make it harder to get my addiction and expect that to solve your problem. You have to solve the problem by breaking the dependence, by saying, I'm not going to be a slave to this anymore. And you do that by fasting, by having definite rules that you do not break, and by not excusing yourself. So you can't, you, you can't go the other way. You cannot dodge the bully, because the bully is just going to wait in the hallway until he finally finds you, and you're going to have that confrontation, that George McFly versus Mean Biff confrontation. Number three... The bullies have shark-like shark noses for weakness, and you can't blame them. Here's where people go so wrong in trying to stop bullying. By stopping bullying, you're stopping nature. It's like leading a campaign in the wild to get rid of all of the predators because they're cruel by taking prey. You're offsetting the whole balance of nature. The strong are always going to pick on the weak. What do you do? If you're weak, you get strong. If you are 
a person who is given to binging, if you are given to overeating, if you are given to breaking down when people bring over foods, you have to strengthen up. You can't go the other way. You can't go and say, I want nobody else to ever bring over good food anymore because that'll weaken, that's, that's going to hurt me. You can't reason that way. You cannot expect the tiger not to eat the, the, the zebra that's slowest, that can't outrun them, or uh, the, the cheetah and the gazelle. The cheetah is a little bit faster than the gazelle, but it's, it's pretty much neck and neck. The slowest one is going to get eaten. You can't hate it for that being that way because that's the way it is. If you're in school and you are exuding a lack of confidence, if you're a student watching this, and you are weak, and you're showing weakness in some way, they're going to be right on you. And the best thing you can do is to learn to socially work and operate and learn to defend yourself. It's the truth. School administrators can't stop it. Nobody else can stop it. You have to stop it. And you have to be, you might have to be pretty smart about how you go about it. But that's, that's the way it worked. And that's why, going back into older generations, you did not see all of this campaign on bullying. Uh, my generation, if you were gay, you got, the, you got the crap beat out of you. Now, that's a horrible thing. That shouldn't be that way. But the fact of the matter is, those, that generation that got picked on, that was not very tough, that you, didn't, you didn't grow up and shoot up a, a post office. You didn't grow up and shoot up your school because you, didn't, you understood that you weren't entitled. That's the difference between someone who's living on the street or someone who's living in the ghetto who's, who, who grew up with a mother who's a single mother, who, di who, doesn't, who didn't have a father, that kid didn't have a father in their life, they learned that they weren't entitled. And if they're going to succeed, they have to overcome poverty. They have to overcome the fact that sometimes they're the wrong color. They have to overcome the fact that, that they were weak and not wanted by society and not an asset. They had to become an asset. That's what makes you stronger. That's what enhances your story. So again, this doesn't mean that bullying should be, but that's nature's way of eliminating those who are unfit. You don't take a tiger or a dog or some animal that has brittle bones and put it in the wild and get rid of all the competition and say, here you go, little pet. You deserve to survive. No, nature says you do not deserve to survive because you cannot provide for yourself. You cannot stand up for yourself. You cannot go out of the way to preserve yourself. That is a law of nature. So apply that to, to your addiction now. Apply that to your addiction. People are going to bring over food, good food. People are going to bring food to work. People, You're going to have days where you don't feel as morally strong to resist temptation. You're going to have days where you get up and you're not ready to resist yourself. Stop giving yourself an out. Stop playing with kid gloves and start realizing that you have to stand up and be stronger, not get everybody to accommodate you for being weaker. That's the truth.